3D printers have been in the news lately for the potential to change our lives, but what can it do for you and how does it work? Well, we start with the basics and try to get a better understanding of the height, the reality and the opportunities. How familiar are you with 3D printing? Not very familiar with it. Not really familiar with it. Never done it. <laughs> no, I've never done it. I only know web printing, I don't know 3D printing. Clearly, there's plenty of room for the makers of 3D printers to widely market their product. Most of the people we randomly asked were not too sure what the technology was about, with more than half of them saying they have never heard of it. What would you like to create with a 3D printer? Oh, I have not really think about that. Probably maybe a car? Luxury cars, sports cars. Okay, I'd like to create a nice ice cream, nice chocolate, gooey ice cream. I fancy one right now, I'm really hot. <laughs> a house? Uh, maybe a car or plane. Will you create for me? Okay, wait a minute. Before we even consider that, let's understand how this new technology works. Traditionally, when you think of printing, you think of printing out something on paper using ink. 3D printing means you can print out a physical object, something you can hold. From a building model to a toy car, golf balls to dentures, or even this, 3D fashion. This could be a prototype for a shawl or a dress someday. According to a recent article in the news, doctors are even able to print entire body parts, such as ears and noses. So how does it work? Well, with your regular printers at home, you probably have ink cartridges like these. But in 3D printers, this is what a cartridge looks like. You basically feed materials into the machine instead of ink. This could be plastic, this could be glass, or even salt, sugar and chocolate. And what the 3D printer essentially does is, the same way that your laser printer flows ink into a piece of paper, your 3D printer deposits material layer by layer, building the object from ground up. But before you get too excited, here's the thing. You will need some form of 3D design training and computer programming knowledge. There are two ways to think about it. There's one way where you can actually 3D scan an object, an existing object, and replicate it through 3D printing technologies, or you can create something, a new design from scratch. That means that you have to create a 3D model, which then is translated into a machine language that the printer can understand. It's a computer application um, that you draw three-dimensionally the geometry of objects and then you assign properties to them, such as material. Um, so this is a uh, common method we use for uh, designing buildings, for products, um, and it's a little bit more elaborate than two-dimensional drawing. This technology sounds very convenient and simple enough to be an exciting business prospect for many industries. But did you know 3D printing has actually been around for about 30 years? In the design and manufacturing professions, we've been doing 3D printing for at least a decade. But what's starting to get interesting now is that you can go out at a store, buy a 3D printer, take it home, print your own stuff. So it's really the consumerization of it that I think that's getting quite fascinating. This model in my hand would have taken three students two weeks to build, but this piece here probably took about two hours, maybe three hours to print. Take it out of the printer, blow it off with, a, with an air gun, you're done. But there is a limit to current technology. There are several challenges. Um, one is the material, on the material domain, which is currently where the most research is. Um, currently, printers only print one or a few materials. Um, we would like to do more than that. And another big one is uh, time and scale, which are related. Um, the size of uh, printable objects today range about the size of an A4 paper to, let's say, a small object like a vacuum cleaner. But if we want to print uh, larger scale objects like uh, buildings or even furniture, then we need to still create parts and then assemble them. 
What is most exciting about 3D printing, experts say, is that it will change the way we think and create things. Take a look at this project. Someone in Netherlands working on printing a house. Yes, it looks bland and not very inviting. But hey, it could one day revolutionize the property market. The issue is that as the chamber, as the print size gets bigger, there's a time question. And you know, for each increase in the size of the printing chamber, you have a cubic, a three times three times three relationship. So if I, to print this thing, double the size, I need 27 times more material. Mm -hmm. And I need three times as much time. So getting things faster and getting them at scale are really going to be the, the big question. It sounds like we're not quite there yet. So back to that question of a car. Can we possibly print a car one day? I'm not so sure that you're going to be able to, you know, print a car in your garage. That's a little complicated but you might be able to print spare parts for the car in your garage. Perhaps not now, but at the rate things are moving, it could happen sooner than you think. I'd say just hang on a bit before you jump in and buy those, uh, because of course, uh, printers sometimes give you problems. There was one time a guy, you know, you call in for tech support, lady said, I can't print yellow. Every other color is fine, blue, green, red, can't print yellow. They mm -hmm. did all sorts of things, went through almost two hours with her on the phone, and finally she went, Maybe I should try printing it on white paper instead of yellow. Okay. <laughs>